Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for frame rate is provided by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. This episode of Frame Rate is brought to you by Squarespace, the all in one platform that makes it fast and easy to create a professional website, blog, portfolio, or online store for a free trial and 10% off your first purchase on new accounts. Go to squarespace.com and use offer code FRAMERATE7. Why is there no audio? Uh, crap. It kind of it doesn't a great work without start. audio. Yeah, it doesn't work so much without audio. Why would, oh, you know what? Hang on. Let me do, um, uh, let me go to default audio device. I get, I best it's, uh, here, you guys can play along with me. Settings. Uh, where would I go? Where would I go to check the audio device that is going where out to? Where would you go to check? I, I could play it. I have it up. Check. You want me to just play it? Yeah, I get but No, I need to fix this anyway for, for NSFW. Oh, okay. All right. Um, playback devices. Uh, yeah, it says it's on the right Should thing. You go and right click now. Right click now. Right click. Brr. Hang on. Give me one second. I can't believe I didn't test this. It was working fine. It worked fine before, which is a sign I hear for some soft sound. rock. I love you, hate you. Do, 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 do. Oh, wait. Oh, wait. This lake. Ah, all right, I got it, I got it, I got it, I got it. Can I, can yeah. I tell you how bad I am? You want to know what the fix was? I, I feel like I should show you the fix. The fix was last time I set this up, I was using the PS3. And I didn't switch between the A and B inputs uh, on that channel. That's the stupidest forgetting to turn your mic on. I know. I know. But like, like I well, at least I didn't forget to turn my mic on. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Here we go. Four reels. Go down. Let me see. How about now? Anything? No. Uh, how about now? No. How about now? No. Anything? What are you doing back there? I don't know. What are you just hitting random keys? Well, obviously. Come on, people. Talk to me. What are we thinking? What are we doing? I'm sorry. Are you addressing me? Because your authority is not recognized in Fort Kickass. <laughs> we don't need gadgets. Oh, really? Machines are going to fail. Then the system's going to fail. And then it's who has the ability to survive. <laughs> Just watch Deliverance again, huh? I mean, is Burt Reynolds not the man in that? On the raft? With the vest? Huh? <sighs> you know, he did all his own stuff. I know! So, hey, it's a happy ending. <sighs> yeah. Yeah, it's just a big old goddamn fairy tale. Fairy tale? Uh, raising? <laughs> Cyril figures. <laughs> Rate. Episode 133. I'm Tom Merritt. That's not possible, Tom. There's no way we're up to episode 133, but that was definitely H. John. Three episodes of the show that thinks you should be able to watch the stuff you love, where you want, when you want, on whatever device you want, and we try to give you all the info you need to make that happen. All right. Who do you think would agree with that statement more, Captain Kirk or Archer? Yeah. Apologies to the audio listeners. You just thought we were showing a bunch of Archer clips, but no. <laughs> It's a Vimeo video from Star Trek mashing up the animated Star Trek with Archer lines to hilarious effect. Yes. Well, if you didn't find it funny, I mean, hopefully, like, if you heard it, then at least you're familiar with Archer and you're like, I remember that moment of Archer as you sit in your Barker lounger sipping your, your wine. But, uh, but for those of you guys visually, it's, uh, it's surprising how well that mashes up. Everything blends very nice. It does. Will it blend? Yes. Yes. In fact, it will. Uh, let's move on to the big story. Oh, 
This just in, the big story. Big win for Ario. Uh, for those of you who haven't been playing along, welcome. Uh, Ario is that, that streaming service that brings you over-the-air broadcast channels through the internet because you rent your own little dime size antenna. The broadcast networks say, that's retransmission. Ario says, no, it's not. The Second Circuit Court of Appeals said, you know, we really don't think it is. Uh, and it revisited its earlier two to one decision on appeal and said, we still don't think we should rehear this. So no rehearing on bonk is what it's called when they would bring all the judges from the second court uh, to rehear the case. CBS lost that appeal. That's a big win for Ario. It doesn't end the court fight, but it means that CBS has now got to appeal it to a higher court. Uh, with the California decision against Aereo Killer, this is likely to end up in the Supreme Court, though. Uh, yeah, I totally believe that. But what I thought was interesting was the uh, dissent from Judge Denny Chin, who mm -hmm. declared Aereo to be a, quote, sham and warned that it was harming the telev television industry. But then he, uh, but then he goes on to uh, take a look at this quote here. Here, I'll go ahead and put it on the screen here. He says, um, he says uh, indeed, the hardware and technology and the cable vision and antennas and wiring at issue here are fast becoming absolute or ab obsolete in this era of the cloud and wireless technology. Courts should follow Congress's lead and resist the urge to look under the hood at how these processes technically work. Now, that's is good, it just that's me? That's good advice. No, okay. Yeah, like, I did mean, you get as mad courts, as I courts did? should follow Congress's lead, Brian. And just be dumb about stuff. Don't know things. <laughs> well, and this is okay. So here's the thing: you can't play it both ways, right? You can't cite uh, for everything else that tried to do what Ario is doing. You can't slap them down because technically, by the letter of the law, they're in violation. And then turn around and then say, uh, "Well, even though this accomplishes the same goal and it does it in the technically legal way." Um, you know, we all know what's going on here. You're just, uh, you're retransmitting, even though you're totally not. And you went to great pains to make sure that you developed an entire procedure just to be compliant with the with the technical letter of the law. Um, considering that all of cable got founded on the illegal re retransmission of over-the-air signals. And now we have somebody who's actually trying to pay by the rules. Like, this really, this really gets me pissed off, man. Was it illegal to retransmit the uh, the broadcast signals? Well, I mean, it was it was wild it was wild west back, back in the day. The the whole way cable yeah. companies got started was because somebody had an apartment complex. They put up one uh, antenna, and they and they realized that if they had antennas going far enough, they could get you know Pittsburgh all the way out, you know, 150 miles that way, or Philadelphia 150 miles the other way, and they just retransmitted it all, which by any standard today would be completely illegal. Today, and that was the today. foundation. I, I, that's that's I don't what know if it was illegal cable. back then. Uh, because back then, the fight was over must carry. The broadcast networks were like, if you set up a cable system, you have to carry the local channels. You can't, you can't shut us out. Uh, the whole tenor of that argument has changed over the years. It's kind of hilarious. Now, the thing about Chin's dissent is that it's dissent. His opinion did not carry the day. So if you're getting all up in arms like, I can't believe Chin said that. Don't forget, he, he, he lost for now. Right. But the reason it's important to note what he said is in an appeal, that could be the argument that CBS et al. use to try to win their case in front of a different court. So it's worth noting. However, if Ariel continues its momentum of winning in court, this is going to play out outside of court. And we know that CBS has threatened to take their broadcast stations off the air and put them on cable and only broadcast the minimum required to keep their FCC license. We've heard them talk about going to Congress. Uh, and one of the outcomes of that is starting to play out in New York City. Ariel. Uh, is affecting the CBS Time Warner Cable dispute. Time Warner Cable has a dispute with CBS over multiple markets, including Los Angeles and Dallas. But in New York City, Aereo exists. So in New York City, New Time Warner Cable has said, well, if we end up uh, having CBS pulled because of this carriage dispute, we, uh, we, we're thinking about recommending Aereo as, as a way for people to be able to get their CBS programming in the meantime. Oh, let me tell you, man, you want to talk about a big, fat, juicy target for all of these cable companies. The fact that Aereo is providing a service that's superior to what cable most cable providers uh, give and the fact that it's doing it without retransmission fees and the fact that it's doing it essentially with the oldest technology possible, uh, re I, I would imagine, has everybody thinking. Now, in this case, they're saying, you know, well, we're in a, a pissing contest with our local affiliate. And if it doesn't work out, then we'll just recommend people use Aereo. Don't think that these guys aren't working on their own uh, antenna inside the set-top box solution or some kind of cloud-based 
DVR oh, yeah. alternative that they they're could do. They're either working on guys, their own or they're trying to strike a deal with Area, one of the two. Sure, sure. Well, and, and I would imagine uh, it, it would seem like the shortest line would be for them to do it themselves. I mean, people have been accustomed. The original sales proposition for cable was that uh, you could get your local channels super clear. You don't have to worry about rabbit ears anymore. But nowadays with digital transmission and superior antennas, if they can offer that, if they could say, you know, get all your cable for, you know, however much we'll say $20 less, all you need is this special box that we give you and we only charge you five bucks a month for it. You come out ahead. I mean, that would be huge for the cable companies, especially well, if they the had short, built The shortest in line would be not to reinvent it. The shortest line would be to strike a deal with Aereo that says, be our back end. We, we would not, like to not take the most profitable line, though. You're right. That that would be we would that would like be the take, shorter say, line. It might even be pretty profitable because you don't have to invest all the R and D into and maintaining uh, the antenna. It, it, it all depends. I mean, think, but either way, do you think way, there's that much R and D? I don't know. Time well, you got yes. There's more than you think because it's not just making it work. It's making it work exactly in the way that will keep you legally protected. Um, yeah. But all that aside, whether they build it or not. Uh, Time Warner Cable is going to do this if it becomes legal. I think that's become clear in this dispute. And and in these disputes, no holds barred. They're, they're punching each other in the gut as much as possible. Time Warner Cable knows that CBS sees red when they think about Aereo. So, of course, they trot this out because they're trying to make each other mad. CBS is taking to all their radio stations in New York uh, and saying, like, ah, Time Warner Cable wants to rid you. You know, wants to not let you watch your programming. Don't let them get away with it. That's what always happens in these situations. Do you know? Do you know what we haven't gotten yet? Uh, I mean, we've gotten an email here or there, but we haven't gotten a real boots on the ground evaluation of what the Aereo experience was like. If only we had like a close friend of the show who was able to join us and tell us all about the Aereo experience from the moment he signed up for the presale all the way until the moment he turned it on. Uh, Brian, I really wish you'd read the lineup and prep for the show because I mean that's what? the very. I mean, it's kind of embarrassing. It's the very next story. <laughs> well, launching. boy, is there egg on my face? I, 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 tell I, me about I'm, this. Story. I don't mean to make you feel bad, but I mean, <laughs> the next story is about Ariel coming to Utah on August nineteenth, where our friend Scott Johnson lives, and he's gonna sign up day one. And August nineteenth is a Monday, which is the day of, of frame rate airs. So I mean, I, I think you just, I think you just. Like subconsciously, you read this and you were remembering it, right? Because that's what sure. that's gonna. Happen. Let's give let's give me that kind of credit. Uh, no, that'll be great. Scott Johnson's always great on the show, no, and it'll be good to get his perspective. All, yeah, all on kidding aside, we uh, we talked to Scott, and he's going to be on the show. Uh, if if he gets signed up, if it if for some reason it doesn't launch smoothly or something, we'll have him on the, the next week. Uh, but hopefully, it launches on the nineteenth. He signs up, he starts looking at some channels, and can report back to us on the show. Let's move on to another big story. Stop everything. It's another big story. Netflix's quarterly earnings. Brian, we have made it. We're doing earnings reports all the time now. Dude, like, well, I'm, first of all, that's great. That's great for this industry. But uh, but am I the only one who's a little bit annoyed with the way I'm reading these headlines? Like, I look at these earnings reports, and the Netflix uh, earnings report appears to be nothing but good news. And yet the first article from TechCrunch has the headline, Netflix Q2 misses due to lower than expected subscriber ads. By the way, outperformed yeah. expectations for earnings per share. <laughs> yeah. Well, welcome to the world of financial reporting. Uh, there's oh. there's what happened, what happened year over year, what happened versus analyst expectations. And then there's just kind of like, I don't know, made up stuff. Uh, the thing that is not great news for Netflix is the subscriber number in the United States. It was 630,000. That's still bigger uh, it, an increase than they had a year ago. A year ago, they had an increase of 528,000. So it's not bad news right, that's in any true. Stretch. But the difference but, was in the last year, we've seen massive, massive investments in properties with the express intent of saying, we want to drive new subscribers. And the fact that this one underperformed out of all of them, you could under, underperform but, on earnings per share. But, but yeah. when your stated goal, when you call a shot, like we're going to get more subscribers because of Arrested Development and you miss, it does make sense that they would put but out a headline like this. they didn't miss their own shot. They called the shot at around 630,000 and they hit it. The analyst said, no, no, no. The way you're going, you should get 700,000, which is ah. like, oh, thank you. that's awfully nice of you until you miss it. And they're like, you missed, you missed the expectations. You should add 700,000. Netflix is like, boom, boom we Reed around Hastings. Yeah. Boo. Yeah, exactly. Uh, but, you know, it it is... It is a an increase, and their their revenue is great. 
Uh, they they got like forty nine cents per share compared to eleven cents per share last year. Uh, we don't want to get into the businessy side well, of it and, all and, that. Much. Yeah, and like forty, 40 cents per share was the uh, was the projection, and so the, they came out ahead on everything. But of course, the headline is the one thing they missed. Uh, but the big things is uh, quarter two earnings show that the revenue doubled since last year, which is freaking huge. Uh, last time I checked, double the money is a good thing. Uh, and here got, I go. Uh, international subscribers increased 610,000, and they made a lot of money internationally, a lot more money than they expected. Uh, so overall, Netflix in the pink. And of course, all of this uh, is going along with the fact that they got the Emmy nominations. They got 14 Emmy nominations, nine alone for House of Cards. So they did you see uh, Albert? These days. Did you see Albert Brooks's tweet about that? No, what did he, what did he say? He, he tweeted out that uh, Netflix announces it will be picking up all of its Emmys at exactly the same time. Like, it's simultaneously accepting all of its Emmys at once. Oh, right. No, I did see that. You're right. Because, because, of, because yeah. instead of, like, House of Cards, you can watch all the episodes at the same there time. There you go. Uh, they said Orange is the New Black uh, got as many views in its first weekend as House of Cards or Hemlock Grove. I, I, they're like, it's it's doing great. It's doing just as good as any of them. Uh uh, they also said that they're going to get into documentaries on the earnings call, and they said they're going to get into stand-up comedy specials. I'll tell you what, that's uh, that's good. That's good. Uh, the stand-up comedy specials make sense because it is a distribution model that will appeal highly to some of the most valued properties in stand-up comedy. You know, we talked about Aziz Ansari is going to be doing this kind of thing. Uh, this is a vertical distribution method. It's going to it's going to cut out the middleman, and that's smart. Uh, the documentaries, though, I think is is one of the quiet quietly one of the strongest points of the entire Netflix lineup because like I will never shell out 10 bucks to go to a movie theater and watch a documentary virtually never I mean I'm sure I've watched a few but uh but when the stakes are virtually zero I'll not only watch documentaries I'll watch documentaries whose thesis is something I I vehemently disagree with you know uh and it's um I, I'm happy to see them doubling down in a direction that I actually use the service and it's taken right out of HBO's playbook. They're saying, oh, yeah, HBO does these award-winning documentaries. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll make those. Uh, HBO has these amazing stand-up comedies. Yeah, we'll, we're going to do that, too. Uh, they're, you know, they're just following the playbook. There's an interesting read on Variety. Uh, we don't have to go too much into it. But Todd Spangler wrote an article called Netflix, the new HBO, Get Real. His premise actually yeah. isn't as uh, controversial as it sounds. He's basically saying, no, Netflix isn't close to HBO yet. HBO is the, is a cash cow and they're established and they, they had hundreds of Emmy nominations. Netflix is just getting started. So it's actually a pretty reasonable column. All right. Well, it's a bummer. Yeah, sorry about that. That they're, that Let's, they're uh, crabbing on it. Take a moment and uh, thank our sponsor, Squarespace, the all-in-one platform that makes it fast and easy to create a professional website, Brian. I can't decide which I like more about Squarespace. And help me out with this, because I was All actually right. tossing and turning last night. And I had this dream. Sure. Oh, I'm sorry. The, oh, there was Squarespace on the one side and Squarespace on the other. And then one okay. Squarespace, Ma Squarespace, said, uh, Brian, mm -hmm. you love me because I'm distributed network hosting. And as a result, no matter how popular you become, your site will never go down. Schwid.com will live forever, son. And then Pa <laughs> Squarespace says, no, you love me because I look good. You'll love me because I make it fast and easy, even though you're a talentless hack who doesn't know the first thing about layout and design. My templates are award-winning, and you'll instantly look like a professional. Now choose your favorite Squarespace. And I was about, to, I was about to reach out, and then uh -huh. what happened? All of a sudden, like an alien spacecraft came down, and it says, no, you will choose Squarespace's ability to scale your platform to any mobile or PC device. No matter what your platform is, you'll look great on Squarespace. What does it mean, Tom? What, what, did you, was there a baby Squarespace talking about how easy Squarespace was to use in there? Uh, uh, actually, in the, in, in the dream, I was the baby. And was, was there yeah. a banker Squarespace, you know, coming by to repossess the cottage saying, well, but you in, can in also the dream, do flexible e-commerce? And in, in, in the dream, it was my daughter, which was kind of weird. I don't even know what that oh, part means. But, but yeah. she came up and she had a calculator and she goes, I calculate that that's the fast and easy way to start a commerce site. Yeah, well, here, here's, here's what it means, Brian. Uh, is that all of the, these are aspects of your psychology telling you that Squarespace integrates all your website needs into one platform, domains, design, development, commerce, hosting, and 24-7 customer support. And so, therefore, you can integrate all of these different aspects of your personality into one sane individual by trying Squarespace.com for free.
Now, okay, see, that's the one thing is because when I woke up, I thought the first thing is like, I'm going to talk to a shrink. And the first thing I thought was shrink's going to ask me, I, I was like, either I'm going to sign up for Squarespace or I'm going to go talk to a psychiatrist. I was like, if I sign up for Squarespace, I bet they'll ask for a credit card or something. No, no credit card, nothing but an email address, any email address you want just to try it out, start building your website. If you decide to purchase it, though, don't be crazy, Brian. Use offer code FRAMERATE7 and get 10% well, off get out of that? first purchase on new accounts. 10% off. Wait, so if I Monthly buy a whole year in accounts. advance? What? Yeah. So if I, yeah. I like I, I, the annual, I already get the discount for buying everything in advance, and then I get another 10% on top? Yeah, and a free domain name if you, if you buy the annual plan. Yeah. Man, I'm not kidding. Brian'sdreams.org. Coming to you soon. That's squarespace.com. Use that offer code, folks. Don't be insane. Frame rate seven. Everything you need to create an exceptional website. We thank them for their support of Tech News Today. Uh, oh, wait. Whoa! <laughs> that was an honest mistake. That wasn't even a bad that one. That one was totally <laughs> honest. It really was. Okay. Uh, okay. 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 No, so, but seriously, seriously, we do thank them for supporting no, Tech News Today do. in addition to Frame Rate. But don't use their code. Use Frame Rate 7. <laughs> exactly. Um, we. <laughs> we have had a few people say, you know what, I really like your show frame rate and everything about the cord cutting and the watching the TV, but I don't get the name of your segments. So, Brian, I have visual aids today to help oh, this is great. explain the names of the segments. Let's all right, start all right, Walk us. Okay. Our first one is Slipstream. Take us through it. Now, it's kind of there in the video intro. You see the Slipstream name in different styles, but Slipstream is about the services that you use to watch the shows. So see Netflix, what you did there. Amazon, Hulu Plus, Crackle, Vudu, iTunes, whatever it is. So this is, is this is about the platforms. This is yeah. about the platforms that make it possible to access the content you want when you want it. And what's our first Slipstream story? It is about Google getting into the business of becoming another one of those streaming services. They're going to slip right in, Brian. Now, hold on. I thought Google already was some kind of streaming service. Don't they have a little thing called YouTube? How is this different? Well, yeah, sort of. Uh, but this would be different because it would be cable television over the internet, right? So you're right. On one side, they've been doing the internet video thing. And on the other side, they've been doing Google Fiber, which in Kansas City provides a television service, a traditional cable television service. But not, it's not, uh, not just it's Kansas City. Through the fiber. Well, that's true. It's in Austin, too, isn't it? I forgot. Pretty soon. Uh, uh, and it's coming to Utah as well in Provo, I think. But, Whoa, really? Yeah. How did I miss they, that? All right. They bought the fiber there. Anyway, they, they provide that television service as a separate service to your internet. It comes over the same pipe, but it's like, well, that's, that's separate. That, you don't, can't just watch it on any internet connection. You have to be at home on our fiber connection. But this rumor that Ars Technica is passing along from the Wall Street Journal would say that Google would provide an online streaming TV service that you could use anywhere you have the internet. And we had talked about this idea before, the idea of an over-the-top internet or network service, basically a full-on cable provider that just operated above the internet layer and used the internet infrastructure in order to deliver its content. And of course, having the fiber, Google's got the bandwidth to, swear, to spare to make that happen. They probably swear, too, about the yeah. uh, bandwidth. It's like, damn, we have a lot of bandwidth. <laughs> yeah, uh, F, yeah, we do. <laughs> We're Google. Yeah. Or Google. Yeah, that's how they talk. Believe me, I know. My wife <laughs> oh, my uh, God. I would love that. You go in and they're just hay seeds. They're chewing on dip. Where? Like, well, you're, you're damn right. We're going to put an SSH encryption on that. Come on, man. <laughs> well, it makes it makes perfect sense for them to do this because they have the streaming video. Like they they YouTube has a store. They have a Google Play store. So they've, they've worked with the industry on those kind of deals for download. They know about streaming video from internet stars and making television shows there with their create spaces. They know about streaming live. They also know how to provide a cable television service now because of Kansas City. So why not yes. just meet in the middle? It makes perfect sense. Uh, yeah, uh, it totally does. And again, this is this is another opportunity, like the more disruptive influences we could get in this this market that otherwise from this is totally in lockstep with the big companies, the the more likely little guys like you and me have a chance to get what we want. Just a rumor for now. Uh, not a rumor is Nimble TV, which has been providing it's kind of aerial like. Uh, but not. It's it's not quite as as innovative, I guess, is one way to put it, or nefarious if you're a broadcaster. What they've been doing is hooking up Dish TV boxes uh, and then allowing you to subscribe to them over the internet. So again, it's it's kind of like renting out sling boxes in a way. Dish TV has cut off their service, 
saying now, that they okay. have violated the terms of service. Now, Nimble TV, did, did it require you to already have a subscription to DISH in order to access this service? Or are they essentially sub-licensing out they're, access to DISH? Exactly. They're reselling DISH. Now, they're, they're, they're doing it in the right way ethically, one would think. It's not like they're taking one DISH connection and then rebroadcasting it. They're, they're making an account for every person who they provide service to. But DISH says, you're not an authorized reseller. We, do, we right. don't want you out there, you know, but buying accounts and then reselling them to other people. If we were going to do the dumb version of this, this would be the equivalent of me personally having Dish and charging my friends $5 for a night of using my, coming over to my house and using my, my service for a while. Not, like that, not that's, even. It, it would be like you buying a second Dish box, hooking it up at your house, and then hooking a sling box up to it and charging your friends to access the sling box and watch stuff. So or this maybe is getting closer the, to like the dish with the sling built in. So it's closer to like sharing your HBO Go login. Trying to, I'm trying to get a sense of no, where because the because it's because it's not sharing. It's not saying I paid for this and now I'm sharing it. The, it's it's basically saying this is an entire account devoted to you. Right. So it's it, it's, it's okay. taking it's taking a separate account each time. It's not it's not trying to rebroadcast. I think that's Wait a minute, wait a minute. So for every single person who subscribes to Nimble TV, they are also buying a dish subscription or does nobody shares a dish subscription at any point? Right. Oh, well then screw that. That's dumb for them to shut that it's, down. They, it, they well, got nothing they're Yeah. Yeah. Right. Dish has got a bad enough time with the cable companies these days as we saw with their AMC fight that they probably it's in their best interest to go shut these guys down and not bother with it because they can because they they can say like hey only authorized resellers can resell accounts you can't do that it's in Got the it. terms yeah Mary. uh and finally ultraviolet is moving closer to the download once watch anywhere promise i actually don't have a big problem with ultraviolet making me re-download something on my tablet or my phone. But it is more convenient if I can download that file once and then just transfer it. I can sideload it on any device I want. To do that, though, they have to agree on a common file format. And the ultraviolet common file format is inching closer to acceptability. Sony and Warner Brothers and Universal have already agreed to Dolby Digital Plus on the audio side of things. Now, Paramount has come in and, and chosen DTS as its preferred surround sound format. Even though that sounds like it may be a problem because you got two different formats, apparently that shouldn't matter too much. They should be able to still have a common file format that'll work uh, because the sound isn't the big compatibility problem with video. I'll tell you what, man. I'm amazed at how slow, how, how unbelievably slow Ultraviolet is moving. The fact that they're just now inching towards a common file format is insane to me. And like, meanwhile... Like, like it's as though they don't even recognize that this is a race and that there's competitors who are beating them for their service. Like every second, they don't jump ahead to to outperform the the benefit to consumer that people are getting out of Netflix and Hulu and Amazon Prime and uh, and and I'm sorry, piracy uh, is it's just ridiculous to me. There, it's glacial and it's like it makes me start to actively resent Ultraviolet before I've ever even used it once. Yeah, but that that's been true for years. I, it's I know, it's only it's, getting slightly less true over time as they actually get closer to a common file format. And frankly, to me, the only issue with this is being able to back up my stuff in case I don't trust that it's going to still work someday. Otherwise, I don't yeah. really see myself doing a lot of side loading anymore these days. It's mostly network transfers anyway. It is so. kind of weird. Like I felt weird. Uh, uh, like and and this is kind of a side thing. Like I feel weird that on on my site uh, scam stuff. We're delivering these extra credit episodes as actual downloadable files. And I was like, is there an infrastructure to where you could just yeah. stream it instantly? Why, why are but, we sending but, actual files? Well, That's weird. People still want downloadable files for podcasting. Believe me, they absolutely do. I ran into this with Sword and Laser on YouTube when you could only get it on YouTube. And people are like, no, I want to download it. I want to be able to right. put it where I want. So it's definitely still important to people. Yeah. Let's move on to Tube Tops. Tube Tops is the section where we talk about these things, the devices that sit on top of your tube. Now, it's a little bit anachronistic because we all have flat screens now. Nobody puts anything on top of them anymore. But they're set-top box devices anachronistically, like the Roku or the Apple but TV. But see, that's why we call them Tube Tops and then play that retro introduction. So you can think, oh, right. that's right, televisions used to have tubes. Or you can say the they're the... That used to be on top of the tubes. Top devices to... Hook up to your tube 
Even though there's no tubes. tubes. <laughs> to, to your brain tubes. It's, yeah. it's all about feeding information into your brain. <laughs> anyway, uh, Apple TV. The rumors keep coming. And these latest rumors, uh, according to The Verge and The Wall Street Journal, uh, say, oh, it's actually not the Wall Street Journal. It's former Wall Street Journal reporter Jessica Lesson on her own website that she's kicking off says that Apple has an ad skipping service similar to Dish's Hopper service. And one of the holdups is getting the studios, getting the broadcast networks to agree to let Apple TV do ad skipping as a premium service. So you wouldn't be able to use the ad skipping as a regular user unless you paid like $10 a month or whatever. And then you could get the ad skipping service and then that money would be given to the broadcasters as compensation for the missed ads. So totally okay with this. I will totally pay for a premium service in order to skip ads. I think it's great that they're at least factoring in, you know, give us the same stream, the same content. We'll, you know, we will skip the ads for you. You don't have to do nothing. Just deliver us, us, us this stuff the way you deliver anything else. And we'll pay you every time somebody skips an ad. Because you know what's happening out there in the DVRs right now? You're skipping ads and you're not tracking it and you're not paying for it. You're not getting paid for it. At least you'll get paid for it. Uh, I, here's the question. And I'm, and I'm curious to hear your take on this, Tom. Uh, okay. Part of what made iTunes work originally is that the music scene was in such disarray that Steve Jobs was able to come in and say, shut up. You want something? 99 cents a track. I'll pay you. You in for that or not? And everybody was so scared that they went for it. And it defined the next decade and a half of, of music, essentially. The question is, are we at that level of disarray in the television market to where Apple can come in, especially lacking a Steve Jobs-like figure, to, to come in and, and say, shut up. We, you know, you're tired of people skipping, skipping ads? Fine, we'll pay you for it. This is what people want. Do you think, do you think this is going to work or no? Yeah, I don't, I don't see Tim Cook walking in and, and quietly and politely saying, shut up. We're going to make this work. <laughs> uh, so that, that's part of it is you don't have the negotiating brilliance of a Steve Jobs there. But that's not most of it. I think most of it is the TV networks saw this coming. And even though they did it for the wrong reasons, they launched Hulu. And that brought a lot of knowledge into their camp and it brought a lot of people and a lot of leverage their way. If Apple had launched Hulu... Apple would be leading this. But the, the broadcasters actually, like, finally stumbled into doing something right for once and got the edge. Now, they, they almost act like they don't want the edge that they have sometimes when they put all these restrictions on it and try to sell Hulu over and over and over again. Uh, but they, they, they do have a little more conscientiousness, more consciousness, not conscientiousness. They have no conscientiousness. They have more consciousness <laughs> about what's going on in the marketplace here. Uh, and so that's why this is taking so long because they want to make absolutely sure that they've wrung every last penny out of this deal and eliminated as much risk as possible. Yeah. All right. What about this next story? Because I got, I got feelings about it, but I don't know how I'm conflicted. Yeah. Are you, you got feelings about uh, the dish handing over the Hopper DVR to mobile app developers? No, like that part is smart. Essentially, like, uh, and as the article from CNET points out, is like normally when you come out with a new technology, you play it, you know, close to the vest. But in this case, they're loaning it out to uh, mobile app developers saying like, hey, can you make something happen to this? But it's like, you know, I'm a fan of the nutty things Dish has been doing. And it's like the fact that, they, that they're shutting down Nimble TV, or Nimble TV kind of has me annoyed. But the fact that they're opening this up has, I guess it's a wash for Dish. I'm... I am neutral. I feel the same about Dish as I did before. The needle did not move because I got one story I like, one story I don't like. It's all about your opinion of the companies. Uh, oh, of course. With, with these stories. And, and, and they're not people, right? And that's no. why they do the things that seem amoral sometimes, which is like, oh, well, you know, what? we're going to have to st shut down Nimble TV because that makes business sense. It's not I worth the I speak for the common man, Tom. Yeah. And the common man regards all of these as bros in a fraternity together. And we all are laughing at their Wait, reality television hygiene. common hygienes. man didn't get into a fraternity or he wouldn't be a common man. <laughs> no, but we're watching them on TV. See, the common man watches reality shows about fraternity bros who okay. are all competing for the new media that space. makes perfect sense, actually. Uh, no, I, you know, I, I do think that, you know, the nimble TV thing aside, Dish is desperate enough because they're the farthest behind in the race and have the fewest options to try as much as possible. And I think this makes great sense to say like, yes, let's open this up. Let's open this platform up. Let's see what people can do with it. Let's push the edge. Um, and and that actually uh, could, could be true of Apple TV as well. Getting back to Apple TV, there's a Time Warner cable app 
uh, close to being inked as a deal, according to The Verge, that would bring Time Warner Cable to the home screen. Now, you have cut Time Warner Cable out of your life. Yes, this I did. You back? Because well, this is uh, still cord cutting, right? You wouldn't have to subscribe. You wouldn't have to have the box in your house. You would still have to subscribe. You would still have to pay Time Warner Cable, but you would get their app on your Apple TV. To be honest, Tom, it's like I think I think the cable companies have played their cards exactly right. And I think that our vision, what you and I want, what the viewers want at home, uh, either whether it be a la carte cable, whether it be you know, break, you know, cutting out the cable companies entirely. I just don't think it's going to happen at this point. I think this is the closest we're going to get. You're going to still have to pay for a cable provider to authenticate you. But once you're authenticated, you will have access to a magical land of all these individual apps that make available the same damn crap that you already had on cable, but it'll be available largely on demand and through a plethora of devices. I think that until then, we're just going to see uh, cable companies continue to use delay tactics to get to that point. But no matter what, I feel like I feel like what my prediction is within a year, there'll be enough services and enough options that I'm going to go back to paying a stupid $80 a month or something crappy for my cable but the company, thing is, which I'm not happy picking, about. You may be picking between Aereo, which may pick up a few cable deals after this is all said and done. You may be pick, choosing between a new Google streaming service as well as Apple TV. I mean, this whole landscape is going to be different in a year. Your choices well, I are hope be so. entirely different in here. I, I hope so. I'm not optimistic. I'm a little bit too jaded, but uh, but but there is a chance, and I hope that is the case. Let's move on to film film. Film film. What's this film film you speak of? Well, Brian, in all honesty, Film Film is the name of our movie segment from the original frame rate, which we just liked too much to get rid of. But what we say it is now is the segment where we talk about the things you watch, whether oh, it's the film. King Kong on HD DVD or last year's Nerdtacular or streaming, DVD. you know, series or movies or whatever. Well, heck yeah. Do we have any news? Uh, yeah, we do. Uh what, what news don't we have? It was Comic-Con this weekend. So as far as things to watch, we got Superman and Batman are going to be in a movie together. We got a Walking Dead trailer. We got a Doctor Who 50th anniversary trailer. What am I missing? There's tons of things. Uh, yeah, I, I think those are the three highlights that I heard the biggest buzz about. And in fact, the way they did the, uh, the announcement was they had um, the guy who played the general in Man of Steel come out to make an announcement about the sequel for, for Superman. It basically walks out. And he says, uh, ladies and gentlemen, there will be a Superman sequel. And everyone goes, ah! And he's like, and it'll have Batman. And the whole place freaking jumped out of their seats uh, from one report that says, the woman next to me is crying openly. Like, that's how it was a complete fangasm as far as the eye could see. Uh, man, I, 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 when's the last time you went to Comic-Con? Thursday. Really? You were just there? <laughs> yeah, I drove down. <laughs> All right, making me jealous. I'm, I wish I could have been there for that. That would have been amazing. Uh, well, I was there I, for Woodstock. I drove down to, to see Woodstock because Paul and Storm told me I could not miss it. And George R. R. Martin came on at the very open of their show and smashed a guitar while they were singing the song Right Like the Wind, which is about George R. R. Martin. Uh, yes, I actually saw that clip. Veronica Belmont posted it. I don't know if we could see a clip of it in there, but uh, it was amazing because like they're in the middle of starting the song and then George R. R. Martin walks out on stage. The entire crowd goes totally nuts. He smashes the guitar, never says a word. Like seeing George R. R. Martin act like uh, like the heavy, you know, like the thing and just stand there. And then Neil Gaiman walks out and gets the whole audience to, to, to or I guess Paul and Storm to say, you know, what did we agree? Or what was the exact line on this? <laughs> Uh, they said, what is George R.R. R. Martin? Not our bitch. Yes. <laughs> because Gaiman wrote a very famous blog post about that. Did you see? Oh, there we go. There's, there's George R.R. R. Martin coming out. There's, there's a better video of this out now on, uh, I think io9 has it, which is officially from Paul and Storm from the Woodstock channel. But this is uh, Veronica's little side video of him <laughs> shaking the <laughs> remains that of the guitar. That had to be so... Right so cathartic for George R. R. Martin. Like, oh, that's, sure. yeah. that's a decade of angst in order to destroy that thing. Shaking it with glee. Did you watch <laughs> the Walking Dead trailer, by the way? You know, I didn't. I purposely avoided it until you put it in the dock, and then I went back and watched it, and um, got to admit, it's a badass-looking trailer. Um, also got to admit, 
I don't believe you, Walking Dead. I'm going to yeah. wait until other people say something before I watch it. Because it does. It looks like they're going back to what I loved about the comics. But yeah. that's what I heard the first round as well. So it's just, it's tough for me to, I'm very guarded when it comes to The Walking Dead. I think that's fair. I would say what I like about this is that uh, it made me feel the way I felt when I read the comics. Yeah. Yeah. Machinima uh, says that they are, according to Reuters, that they're going to start their own Netflix-like service. Uh, they're looking to raise about $80 million and create content thanks to expanded partnerships. They would be doing this in cooperation with Google, so probably on YouTube, probably as part of those paid channels. And Machinima CEO Alan Debevoix? Sorry, yes, Alan. That's, and, uh, and that's actually the whole that name. You got to They intend to raise the capital to be a company in the spirit of HBO and AMC. I don't know what that means. And and let me tell you, like, there's a lot I like about the Machinima phenomenon. I think they're doing a lot of stuff exactly right. They're hitting it. Uh, they're hitting this market, which is a undervalued market of, of, of video game enthusiasts. They're hitting it from two angles. One is the angle of, of people who love to watch other people play video games, uh, which we've already talked about before is a remarkable thing. The other is the Saturday morning cartoon market where they essentially have a platform where Microsoft is perfectly happy to drop a few million dollars on a live-action Halo series, and it's in their interest to make it good because it will stoke sales of the next Halo release, which is exactly what G.I. Joe and Voltron were all about. It was about selling the toys, so they bothered to make Transformer cartoons good enough to where they could sell the next batch of things. All of that makes sense to me financially. I, I don't see a place, and forgive me here, I don't see a place for high-end quality in this market. I don't see why it would be valuable or important to make this kind of programming good does that make Full sense 44 minute shows what if they what if they were making archer type stuff uh and, i mean you know, granted, those i, I would love it there. i would love it I, I i don't see that that puts them in a better position though like hbo had a goal where it's like we're going to make exquisitely good programming that's going to make waves and win emmys and get everyone talking about it so people will want to subscribe i i I don't know that Machinima needs to do that or or even can, really. I mean, it's I, I don't understand their play, but I wish them the best because I'm a fan of what they're doing. How about that? And uh, finally, Spike Lee has started a Kickstarter at this recording. Uh, he's got $15,000. That's double what he had when I looked at it a few hours ago. Uh, he wants to make a movie independently of the studio system. He's like, I saw what Veronica Mars did. I think that's awesome. I'm going to do this as well. Uh, and it's about human beings who are addicted to blood, Funny, sexy, and bloody, and it's not Blackula. Can I tell you something, Tom? Did you watch the entire pitch video for this? No, I didn't. Hated it. I hated it. It was awful. Go to, go, go to Kickstarter, go to uh, type in Spike Lee, take a look at it for yourself. Here's the problem. He starts off, and uh, like a good Kickstarter says, here's my vision. Here's why it couldn't be done anywhere but Kickstarter. Here are the tangible benefits you get as a result of taking part in these things. He did none of those. He leads off saying how awesome he is for being Spike Lee. Says, I saw all the money Zach Braff made. I saw the money Veronica Mars made. Uh, and I, I, that's how I need to fund it too. Then lists all the awesome movies that he once made. And then mentions something vague about, uh, yeah, there's benefits too. And then you look at the benefits, the tangible benefits. Guess what you get if you donate $100 to his movie, Tom? Well, I, I can just look at it. I'm, I'm you, you, it's you autographed t-shirt. T -shirt. You plus autographed t -shirt. DVD. Plus DVD. Right. And a special online screening opening weekend at the film. Okay. Here's the difference. Here's the difference. Is so you, Veronica Mars. Veronica Mars had a great narrative. It was, this movie will never be made unless you pay for it. The studios have passed on it. Zach Braff had a specific narrative. I want to make another a sequel to Garden State. I could do it through the studio system. It will be compromised and become something I hate. You can make it possible to make this happen. Spike Lee had none of that. It was, there's, there's a 45-second chunk where he does nothing but point to a sign and list all the awesome movies he once made. It's like, I, I got mad looking at it. I got Well, so it's I, not for I don't, you. You're not going to back it. But I, I don't fine. think that I don't, this is bereft of appeal to a lot of folks. We'll see. We'll see if I it mean, ends up. I think this is Spike Lee saying, I, this is who I am. This is that. I don't look at that. I don't hear any of what you're saying and think, well, that's out of character for Spike Lee. This is who Spike no, Lee is. If you true. like Spike that's Lee, this, you know, this is what you're going to get. 
I just, I just, if I was writing, if I was sitting, if Spike Lee had come to me, which he should have, Spike, you should have called me directly. I would have said, if you want to succeed at at, at Kickstarter, you got to have a narrative. You got to sell us something. And he did he none of that. He has a narrative. I, you I just don't like, like it. Well, the narrative, the narrative is other people made money on Kickstarter. That's what I want to do too. I'm Here's Spike a list Lee, of awesome made movies I made. Movies. Do you want me to make he, another one? That's his narrative. No, no, no. Honestly, but, but, but that there's no people. But, but it's got no teeth because everybody knows that he could make another movie within the studio system. There's no reason for him it not to good. go to the studio. Yeah, there is. To to have the independence. I get that. To be like, mm. nobody's going to tell me that I can't. You know, he's always been that kind of like, I want to work outside the system guy. I get that. That that seems uh, to make sense. To me. Yeah. Well, that was not made clear to me at all in this video. And I'll and I I will I'll bet you a steak. Look at that. I'm going to make a steak bet that he won't hit... Uh, they won't hit his number by by the end of the uh, by the end of the Kickstarter. Yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll bet you a stake it won't get funded, and, and, and not because it. I think you may. I think there's a good chance you'll be right, just because the fact that it's only at sixteen thousand right now. Although it's starting to pick up acceleration as people start to know about it, um, but I'll I'll take it. I'll take the stake bet. That works. And by the way, for the rec for the record, uh, you know, I I think he's a delightful filmmaker. I just think he's doing a very wrong headed way of approaching Kickstarter. Exactly. Kickstarter's a different yeah. animal. Yeah. Yeah, we understand. All right. Uh we so we've got this quick cuts thing where we're taking the stories we wouldn't normally talk about and giving them sixty seconds so we can bring more stuff to you. Uh and uh, somebody suggested we call it Quickster. Get it? After the <laughs> Which failed. I like. I like I you know what? Let's let's cut. I'm gonna pinch some material from the feedback here. Here are some of the other ones. We got Quickster, which I like. Uh, some uh, Jeff says, I think you need to name it something that's related to the subject covered. Something like blipverts taking a cue from Max Headroom or media briefs, quick hits, the quickies or something like that. Uh, Dan says to keep with the TV theme, we should call it scan lines, which I think is clever. Uh, like and weird, weird am I says the timer can be ha- called the hurt clocker or you could get techier and call it the hurts locker. H-E-R-T-Z. <laughs> Which, the hurt clocker is hilarious, but it will it will age. It won't age well. Uh, right. Whereas scan lines is kind of kind of fits in with film film and tube tops pretty. well. I kind of like blipverts, but uh, but I'm fine either way. You yeah, guys but, tell us which one you like. Fr at twit. Advertising though, and this isn't anyway. anyway. We should we, we'll get stuck in focus group think if we don't just start it. Ready, Jason? Starting now. Uh, Peter Kafka on All Things D has an article saying that Google or Apple could make web TV a reality with a couple cool billion spent on the NFL. Justin Robert Young has been making this point for a long time as well. But basically just saying, buy the NFL, put it on your service, you will be the new service that everybody goes to. And specifically buy the Sunday ticket. Now, the question, yeah, right. of course, That's is, is Sunday you can't buy. That's a good point. Right, correct, and and they uh, they specifically Sunday ticket is like what uh, full access to all the games, completely unregion locked, and uh, but it's expensive. It's like two hundred and fifty dollars. No, I thought it was region locked. I thought you still didn't see the stuff that or not region locked, but you still didn't see the stuff that was broadcasting on your local television affiliate. I will have to double check that, but it's uh, two hundred and twenty five dollars a pop, and I'm trying to get the number on. It says uh, Directv currently pays a billion dollars a year for Sunday ticket. Uh, we only have a few seconds left. Good idea, bad idea. Uh, great idea. Nobody's going to do it. Nobody's, even though it makes financial sense. Peter Kafka is a genius. They're not. All right. Uh, TechCrunch has an article. When will Doom come to Hollywood? Should ticket prices fall in order to keep the movie-going experience alive? And basically, the gist of this article is uh, we all love going to the movies, and what's keeping us are these high ticket prices. If you want to keep movies alive, keep blockbusters rolling, you need to drop the ticket price. Uh, what do you say, Tom? you believe this or no? You know, I wouldn't have believed it until I read John Alvin's whole article, and he really kind of persuaded me that he he's basically saying you will never keep the the uh, the funds that you're getting right now. Uh, he but box office sales have been going up because they keep raising prices. Uh, the studios just need to realize that you're going to have to change that trend. You're going to have to say we're no longer going to be the first place or the only place. But we can we can be the best place. It's a different experience going to the theater. All right. I'm going to use my extension on this. So we'll go another minute on this. Uh, here's what I'm going to say. I'm going to say that this is really an argument against the the nature 
of the long tail, the, the, the nature of the fact that, you know, they, they called the, they said it used to be the 80, 20 rule, 80% of the money made by 20% of the movies. Now it's more like the, you know, the 96, four rule or whatever. Uh, that's fine. You could be mad that that is the state of things, but don't think that changing uh, it's, it's not price flexibility. That's determining that the head of this giant uh, beast, it's, it's the fact that I, as some, I, I, on it to me, the price of going to the movies isn't the money. It's the getting out of the house. Like, that's 90% of the way there. Once I get there, how much I pay turns out to be a surprise to me. It's like going to a theme park. I say, do the opposite. I say, don't worry about what you're charging, but it provide an exquisite experience that cannot be duplicated at home, and then you'll win. I think I, I don't think they have to cut prices, but they need to slow the increase, or it will start to affect you when it's $100. All right. Spirit Clips from Hallmark uh, is a company. It's actually a company Hallmark bought, uh, and they're now making it available for four ninety nine a month. It's like Netflix, Brian. Uh, yes. But it has family friendly movies, and by family friendly movies, I don't just mean the selection. I mean some of the movies are movies that would normally not be considered family friendly. They're R rated movies, but they're the television friendly versions. So the curse words have been edited out, the sex scenes have been toned down, so that you can watch them and not worry about all that kind of stuff. As an artist, and I'm using air quotes for all my audio listeners, uh, this this turns my gut and disgusts me. As a father. I'm seriously thinking I'm going to run downstairs and sign up for this right now. Like the idea that that there's rated R programming that's in the pop culture that my kid, as she becomes a teenager and so on, will be able to experience without me having to have complicated explanations of what stuff means. That makes me happy. I'm down with that. I'm just happy that those weird versions with the weird ADR will per persevere. <laughs> <laughs> this is what happens, Tom, when you find a stranger in the Alps. Uh, all right. The next web reporting. That now, now, I want you to see, I'm making a big bubble with my hands now, and it's going to get smaller with each word. Amazon's Whoa, love film oh, that's smaller. brings a watch list feature that's interesting. to its Nintendo Wii <laughs> app <laughs> in the UK. Oh. <laughs> now, if, there's, if there's one person out there for whom this is exciting news, please write us directly. Now, of course, this is good and exciting, and it means that uh, that they're continuing to enhance their services worldwide. This is a step in the right direction. But, man, is this a specific story. They already had it for the PS3, so we don't even need those 20 seconds. Let's just, let's just move yeah, on. Move forward. <laughs> Netflix does not crop movies, except sometimes it does. Uh, Netflix... Uh, responding to a Tumblr called What Netflix Does says, no, 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 we we try to offer the best picture and provide the original aspect ratio of any title on its service. Even if it's super widescreen, we try to letterbox it so you're seeing the whole movie. The Tumblr blog did admit that sometimes they had to go to different regions' versions of the Netflix to find examples of, of movies that have had their aspect ratio changed, Netflix says those must be mistakes. We must have got the source material wrong from the people who actually encode this stuff. Yeah, I'll tell you what, whether it is a mistake or whether it's not, now that they've said those words, now that they've gone on the record saying that uh, what is important to us is presentation and we want, we want to be accurate, I feel like they're beholden to that and whatever artifacts you see right now are going to be fixed as we go forward. I think Netflix has taken a step in the right direction on this one. I think you'll always find some weird VHS version that accidentally got digitized or something, but for the most part. Yeah. All right. So ABC, uh, wait, under is under the dome was ABC, right? And uh, they were no, putting under out the dome stuff. Was CBS. CBS, right? That other network. There's only two in the world. Uh, under the dome showing up on on Prime Insta Video four days after they air on CBS. We're seeing the exact same thing. Cable network BET announced that it will air episodes of the hit political drama Scandal eight days after they run on ABC. Now, uh, BET, uh, you know, obviously another cable, this is not on demand. This is a case where they're taking um, premiere content on one of the broadcast networks and showing it on one of the less popular cable networks. Uh, is this, is this, is this? Are we going to see this with a bunch of different places now, you think? I think this is an interesting trend, an early part of the wave of maybe secondary channels becoming services, becoming rerun services, maybe even moving to online in some cases. I, I'm waiting for that. That's what I'm waiting for. You know for, what? It, it all, one of it these all channels looks, that makes it the looks like to feudalism online. to me. It looks like the king gives it to the duke, gives it to the, the landowners and so on. And that is the end of Quickster and or Blipverts and or Scanlines.
and or something else. Thank you for joining us. Let's move on to check in on the Summer Movie Draft. Coming out this weekend, it's The Wolverine. That's my movie. And then shortly following on July 31st is The Smurfs 2, Justin Robert Young's movie. All right, so you are at $438 million right now. Justin's at 627 Pretty much most of his movies have lost steam. I figure Smurfs has... Uh, wait, Smurfs 2 has already come out, right? Yeah. No, 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 no. It still has to come out. Uh, is this your last movie, Tom? No, you also have Planes, which will be huge. I don't know. Mm -hmm. You made the claim. I thought you were crazy when you said you thought you could take second place. Looking at it now, it's a definite possibility. Justin yeah, thinks and, you're crazy. And in too. fact, I, I have... Uh, partly, I have the heat... To thank for that, but mostly at Monsters University, two hundred forty nine million. It, it actually outperformed my expectations, so that's good. Uh, if the Wolverine ends up doing well, which it's got sixty seven percent on Rotten Tomatoes, I'll be in, I'll be in good shape for that. It's not a lock by any stretch. Planes could totally tank. Um, oh, I, I doubt. I doubt it. Keep in mind that you paid seven dollars for planes, whereas uh, Sarah play, paid seven dollars for Elysium, which I think planes will do better than Elysium, and planes will definitely do better than Kick Ass Two, which Sarah also paid seven dollars for. So yeah, but it I think matter uh, what we paid at this point. It matters how much we've got in the bank, and she's got a sure. hundred more in the bank than me. Yes. Well, uh, well, I guess, and she does have Elysium and Kick-Ass 2 coming out, but you got a Wolverine and Planes. I think Wolverine and Planes will definitely do better than Elysium and Kick-Ass 2. And I think the, you the got guy a good that shot. I really need to worry about is Justin, because the Smurfs 2 is going to make some money, too. Yeah, it's not that much. It, look, it, it'll be amazing if it hits uh, 200 million. I mean, it's yes, all I mean, fighting for second place at this point. Correct. And Brian there's Ford. the question of whether or not, uh, whether or not I'll be one of uh, the draft's second billion dollar baby. I don't think... Uh, uh, who was it that broke a billion last time? I forget. What, who cares? Yeah, they, they, that's the past. We're not here to talk about the past. We're here to talk about what we're watching. Good call. What we're watching. Tom, I have a terrible confession to make. Uh, I've watched like nothing, like practically nothing on television at all. Once I finished Orange is the New Black, the only thing I've done is I started the documentary about lawsuit abuse called Hot Coffee. Hi, my name is Brian. I'm boring as crap. And uh, and I didn't even finish it. So that's that's all I got on my plate. How about you? Dude, no, no. That, I'm, I'm right there with you. I, I've only watched, in fact, I'm worse. I've only watched one episode of Orange is the New Black so far because uh, uh. I'm trying to watch it with Eileen. So, you know, it's it's fine in time. And then I, I did catch up on Under the Dome. It starts to get better after those last couple episodes. I'm, I'm getting intrigued again. I did, oh, I did watch the season finale of Warehouse 13, uh, which is Gut Puncher. Wow. But that's and, and it, another, Well, another Gut Puncher was the season uh, finale of Defiance as well. Both of those were just like oh, wait, cliffhangers. Wait, so Defiance is good, but you didn't have any extra time to watch other stuff. It's not like you're just made of TV and movie no, watching time. No. Well, no, well, there was Futurama. I did squeeze in Futurama because it's not that long. I always got time for Futurama. Oh, Venture sure, Brothers. Sure, sure. Venture Brothers had their season finale last night. Um, wait, have you yeah. watched the entire season of Venture Brothers without me? I have, yeah, yeah. Mm, I right. also watched, but, but that's it. But that's all you've all the, watched. I haven't watched all the True Bloods, but I did watch True Blood last night. Oh, and, oh, and uh, and then, uh, sa yeah, Saturday I watched Jackie Brown, the Quentin Tarantino. <laughs> you just throw in a Tarantino to rub it in my face. All right, I but hate that's you. it. But that's all I want. That was it. That's all I had time for. Let's do some feedback. <laughs> now it's time for feedback with Brian and Tom on Flame Radio. Yeah. DJ Diddles sends to us. He says, hey, guys, I want to let you know about the HD Home Run. This is a little box that you plug into your antenna, and it streams that signal over your network to your smartphone, tablet, PC, or Xbox. It's Windows Media Center compatible, and the best feature, you can access two streams from one antenna. Kids watch cartoons on the Xbox, and I watch the news on my desktop. There is no internal storage, so it saves the episodes right onto the desktop PC or storage device. At 60 bucks is very cheap and an easy solution to have for an over-the-air uh, DVR and allows you to watch TV anywhere in your house. Also works with XBMC and the quality is top-notch. Love the show. Uh, dude, I, 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 this was not on my radar at all. I would love to check it out now that I've cut the cord. Yeah, it seems like that's a great solution for somebody who doesn't mind tinkering a little bit. Not not a ton of tinkering, uh, but you do you do have to plug it into your router, and you do have to have a, either an XBMC or Windows Media Center hooked up to one of the TVs. Uh, and there's another there's another little fiddling bit you have to do if you want to get it on your phones and stuff. But it will, but it will work. It's it's pretty good. Thanks, DJ. Uh, also, Tyler G gave me hope. 
He took the chicken challenge with DirecTV while under contract, mind you. Uh, he's under contract for the next 18 months, called them and said, you know, I just can't afford it. I'll, I'll pay the termination fee. I don't care. I want to cancel. Uh, they gave him a slight discount. He said, nope, going to cancel. They came back with another slight, nope, going to cancel. After it all ended up, he got Sunday ticket, NFL for free, $25 off a month on his main TV package for 12 months, taking his monthly bill from $100 a month to $70 a month, $75 a month, all without extending his current 18-month contract. Well done, Tyler G. Yeah, he says a total savings of five hundred and forty nine dollars ninety four cents. So did you uh, did you call? I, I forget. I know you had a contract and you were not optimistic as a result. Did you actually call and have the discussion, or do you think this could? Yeah, happen? I no, I haven't. I I, this, I, I just, we just saw this email today, so uh, I I will now call and just be like, hey, what's up? Uh, you know, yeah, what's up, bro? It's just so expensive. Who's this guy? I just it. don't want to do the thing with the stuff. Uh, well. So we got one other quick comment from B Hall who says he's been thinking about the a la carte cable and the realities if it actually happened. And he believes, number one, we would be paying a lot more for the cable channels that we want. And he gives a great link to an article uh, called The Cord Cutting Fantasy that we'll go ahead and put uh, in the show notes. And he's, he asks us, how many of us would be willing to pay 20 to 30 a month for AMC? And I, I saw another article saying that, um, according to some analysts, if everything was a la carte, ESPN would be $30 a month. And the question is, you know, how many people would do that? It says, number two, I think it would be the death of niche channels. You and I may not like them, but people do watch Lifetime, CN, Science, Speed, DIY, BBC America, et cetera. But, uh, but if it costs $10 a month to add them, how many channels would get enough subscribers to survive? And finally, discoverability would be much more difficult to check out a show that you hear about great reviews if you don't already know the channel. You know, the more I think about it, man, it's like... Uh, let cable have their all-you-can-eat buffet. Let that be what cable is. And if you truly want the a la carte experience, then cut cable altogether and just buy the episodes that you want as they come out. You know, $80 a month is a lot of money to spend 2 to $3 at a time. I'm starting to smell some AstroTurf here, and I'm not accusing B. Hall. I think I, he's, he's legitimately reading these sites. Uh, but there is a little bit, because there's another article out there about the sports aspect of it. And I think there's quietly some PR work being done that says, look, we don't want this a la carte cable thing. It's just going to cost you a lot of money. Fact of the matter is, it will cost anybody who wants sports more money to go a la carte because sports is subsidizing the rest of your channels. It's Correct. likely not to save you a lot of money otherwise because there's a certain amount of money these networks get from providing the channels and they're going to figure out how to get that money. If they could figure out how to get more money by going a la carte, they would be going a la carte. They would be touting the, the, the benefits of going a la carte. It's not that providing a la carte is somehow crazily more expensive. It's that they make more money in the system the way it is right now, and they want to keep it that way. So I, I would be very skeptical at these gloom and doom like, oh, if you go a la carte, you'll have to pay $30 for AMC. That is not believable to me. It would not save you money, though. It's not going to be this great cost savings thing. His other points, I, th I think, are great. I mean, we would be the death of niche channels and a lot of niche channels that don't need to survive because not that many people watch them. Watch them. We have boundless niche channels on the internet, so I'm not sure that I would miss them. And that's discoverability as well. You can watch anything you want, anytime you want. That's what this whole show is about. So I agree Fair with you, enough, Brian. Man. Just, just let them have their old way of doing things while the new way uh, starts to grow over here. I like, uh, I like your analysis of the AstroTurf. I hadn't looked at it before, but you're right. It's been like this week, especially, a giant slew of like, who wants to a la carte? Boo, oh, a la carte. A la carte. Just, you know, I've been thinking about this. More like I, a la yeah. fart, am I right, fellow cable operators? <laughs> what? Yeah, <it's> All right. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> hey, All right, uh, well, if you guys yeah, want yeah. to submit something, send us to uh, fr at twit.tv or frameratio at gmail.com, and we'll go ahead and put you right on the air. We do read all of that stuff. Sometimes it takes me a while or I miss a chance Try to respond, but all of it goes into these eyes. Yes, absolutely. And find us on Mondays at 3.30 p.m. Pacific, 6.30 p.m. Eastern at live.twit.tv. Or if you're like, I can't make that, Tom. I've got a busy life. I've got to watch as many TV shows as you claim to. You can just get us anytime you want at twit.tv slash FR. We'll see you next time. Yeah, bye. Keep circulating the tapes. <laughs>